So we exist in a very privileged position, really, um, because I am from the Grimsby Institute, and the Grimsby Institute has been on quite a journey. Um, not only is it a journey of, of digital expectations and one of changing staff and, and student minds, but it's also been one of promoting and, and making sure that the digital learning agenda was taken from where it was, which was not in a good place, to where it is and where it's going, which is an incredibly good place. And so what I want to do with this presentation is kind of share uh, our aspects of that journey, um, some of the good things that we're doing, some of the good work that we're doing, um, in a hope that it inspires um, anyone in the room, really, to take up the mantle of what, we, what we're trying to achieve. Um, before I even start all of this, all of the things that we've done here, um, I'm part of a very small team. Um, there's myself, and I have two, and I guess you'd call it two and an eighth, um, uh, learning technologists. And we have made a great deal of difference in our organization. And with Canvas's help, we're going to show you exactly why that is. So let's, this is the title of the, pre the actual presentation. So from prehistoric to posterity. We always had a plan when we um, started our journey with digital innovation at the Grimsby Institute. And our plan was to unify. What we had was um, an unfortunate series of different events, for want of a better description, that occurred. So, for example, disparate systems. Um, and anyone in the FE, HE sector will probably relate to this, but we had learner management systems, we had virtual learning systems, we had every kind of conceivable kind of system working in a silo, none of which talked to each other, even if the computers were in the same room, even if those people who did those jobs were in the same space. These things never really talked to each other, and because of that, our learner journey became something of a problem. Not necessarily from the learner's point of view, they were having a good time, the courses were good, the teaching was good, but what, it, what we were on was an uphill struggle to try and get the digital agenda across. So let's have a look into why. I'm, I'm going to skip my introduction, because I've had an even better introduction. Praying God, I sound. We'll skip that. I'd like to begin with an interesting theory. There is a theory, it's not necessarily one I hold to, but there is a theory that says that if the Titanic um, had not steered away from the iceberg, in fact, if the Titanic had either full steam, which it was full steam, had, had steered directly into the iceberg, it would either not have sunk or it would have taken a lot longer to sink, which would have meant that, well, it wouldn't necessarily have saved more lives, but it would have meant, perhaps, that there'd have been more time for other ships to get there. Now, whether you hold that theory as true or not, the lesson to be learned from this is quite, is quite interesting. You can either, when there's something, in, something afoot, something going to happen, you can try and steer away from it, if you like, when there's an inevitable. The inevitability about the Titanic was that it was going to sink because of the mismanagement, the poor build, and a hundred million other problems. But we can stand around and focus on the fact that the Titanic sank and how it sank, or, and circle around those facts, or we can try and understand and make the journey better. And this is really where we're at with some, in some senses with digital education and with digital learning, is that we circle around the problem. We know that there's a problem in there. We know that the curriculum, as Deb Miller has accurately pointed out in the previous presentation, we know there's a problem there, that curriculum in some areas is simply isn't ready. Or perhaps it's more fundamental than that. This is what is classified as a modern learner. So the modern learner, according to this particular information, is distracted, overwhelmed, untethered, on demand, collaborative, and all the things that we know that they are. But in actuality, that's not necessarily the case at all. Do we really know them? Modern learners are an intriguing bunch. Now, I come from a, a teaching background. I've taught um, on and off since two, well, in the last 10 years now. And I can tell you now that always the learners surprise me. They are always intriguing. They are always different. They are something we cannot define. And so I came to the conclusion that we can't ever really know the learners. Now, if we take them out of the equation, what are we trying to fix? And this was the debate I had in a previous presentation. The problem was that we were trying to democratize education, <coughs> trying to take curriculum out of the box by providing lots of tools to these guys, and then tell, trying to tell them how to use them in what space and how, without really understanding what we were doing in any respect. This is the equivalent, really, of the Luddites. 
We are not necessarily Luddites, that's a bit harsh, I have to say. <laughs> but what we are is fundamentally misunderstanding the problem. The problem isn't that our learners don't know how to learn digitally, they know how to learn, end of, whether it's digital or otherwise. The problem is we don't quite know what to do about it. Now, we were in this position at the Grimsby Institute, unfortunately, and so we had to decide what we were going to do about it. We had a significant investment in IT infrastructure, and as I'm sure many of you will relate to, um, no matter how much money you spend in IT, it always seems to disappear into the IT money pit. And you never really seem to see the benefits of it always. So we had a lot of quite a large infrastructure spend. We were, we're a huge college group. The Grimsby Institute actually spans quite a large area. In fact, we have colleges in Skegness. And for those that don't know any of the geography that I'm talking about, um, we've got colleges in Skegness and Scarborough. These are about the equivalent footprint. Um, it stretches all the way up the Yorkshire coast, really, right the way up through to Scarborough. So it's a good 150, 200 miles in, in, in all travel time, if you wanted to see all of them. We have about 20,000 students, some, some part-time, some full-time, and about 2,000 staff. At any given time, we also have about 2,000 HE students. We're a big college group. So for us to get the technology wrong is costly. And it costs in different ways. The learners don't really feel it. But what you get is lack of confidence in the staff. And what you get then is a lack of confidence in the staff. And then you get the snowball effect where you get less innovation and risk. Innovation and risk are insurmountable things. And if you don't have one, you don't get the other. And without that, you start to suffer. Now, we suffered at the hands of, not say suffer at the hands of Ofsted, but our original Ofsted inspection in 2012, we came out good, which is good, obviously. But the problem there was that they pointed out three things we weren't doing very well, uh, th three things that prevented us from being outstanding. The first one, there's two English and maths. Okay, we can do something about that. The second one was they felt the staff were not taking risks digitally and that the class teaching was boring. They, were, they felt that the staff were risk aware. And when we did a big digital survey about that to find out exactly what was going on, the message was very clear. We have no faith in the technology's ability to deliver the things you want us to deliver. So we had to have a bit of a rethink. In fact, we had to mix it up. And at just about this time, um, a wonderful report came out, which some of you may remember, Feltag. Feltag is the equivalent of, ex of Execute Order 66 from the Star Wars movie. It's very mysterious. At one point, it was you must convert some of your delivery into online. Then it kind of relayed, it kind of relegated on that, and it was actually, this is just a recommendation. We didn't mean it. You know, we didn't, you know, we, we, what we told you first off was 10 to 20%, but you know, you don't have to do that. If you don't want to do that, it's okay. Now, we took that pretty seriously at the Grimsby Institute because we saw it as a num for a number of things. One, it answered a part of our digital agenda, which was we wanted to embrace newer technologies and, new, and newer delivery methods. Two, it meant we could start the unification process and get the learner journey and the digital journey to be one thing. And it also meant that we could rationalize some of our delivery at a time when the financial cuts to FE were rapidly becoming more and more difficult to manage. We needed a way of rationalizing some of the delivery costs in order to offset um, some of the money that was being taken out of FE and, and sadly still is taken out. So we had existing challenges that we needed to resolve. This is the wonderful, I love this slide, because this is the wonderful goose driving dog cart. Now, this is a miraculous invention from mainland China. Um, however, the reason I like this slide and the reason I like that image is because it's a reminder that no matter what you do to a system, it will always be the system. No matter how much you decorate that system, it will always be the system. And that is the problem we had with our IT infrastructure and also the problem we had with our ILT system. And that IIT system at the time was Moodle. Now, I've made no secret in many presentations of my dislike for Moodle, partly because of, well, for a number of reasons. I won't go into all of those now, <laughs> but suffice to say, it has its issues. Um, and it's not just Moodle. There's other similar solutions to that problem. The online learning agenda was answered by free software and that cannot be. And we tried to make that solution fit 
what we needed it to do, and that is what we ended up with. What we took was Moodle's model, and we tried to apply new templates and new structure and new things to it, and we ended up with the goose driving dog cart. It was still Moodle. It just had things hanging off it, really. In the midst of all this, as part of our journey, we needed to get 10 to 20% of our level two and level three curriculum delivered online because that meant a half a million pounds saving in direct delivery costs. Half a million pounds is big money in FE terms. Now, as much as the saving that we made partially funded the Innovate team, which is myself and my two colleagues here and our missing eight, um, as much as it funded us, Half a million pounds is still half a million pounds saved, and that's, on, that's ongoing as well. So that's half a million saved every year that we do that. And now we're looking to expand it to 20 to 30% of all curriculum. There was irrefutable logic behind all of this. What came rapidly obvious to myself and to my colleagues is that we needed a better solution than we had. It's quite simple. We danced around the problem enough. We danced around Feltag enough. We'd played at trying to get the learners to do what we needed them to do. We adopted a solar agenda, so we had scheduled online learning and assessment. We'd put them in a library, we'd put them in the resources, and then given them the worst tool in the world to use to try and learn from. And so we had to go on a journey to find a better solution. And that isn't necessarily taking a hammer to the one we had, although that's exactly what we did. We needed something that could deliver on, what we, on our agenda, and that solution was Canvas. Now, I have to tell you, we did our due diligence, and Kenny Nicholl, if he's even around, will testify to that fact. We were 18, well, for the best part of 12 to 18 months in due diligence with Instructure to make sure that that was going to be the best match for our organization. And I mean, we put them through their paces. In fact, um, Kenny Nicholl himself came to the final presentation. I think it was four times he had them over to, to pre present to us. And they didn't just present to us, they had to present a working solution to learners and to staff. And every time, Canvas delivered. Now, I've always said that if you're going to do a software demonstration, and I've done hundreds and hundreds in my time, then the best thing you can do is make sure it works. And it works all the time. And Canvas did that for us. And it impressed a guy who sits right at the top of our organization, a chap called Adrian Clark, who's not here today. But it impressed Adrian Clark, and for it to impress him, it takes some doing. So in the end, we managed to do it, and that meant we could finally depart from the previous VLE resource sinkhole that was Moodle. I have to tell you, at this point in time, Moodle was taking us down as a team. It had its moments. I mean, our implementation of Moodle was particularly poor. That's our fault, I have to say, not necessarily Moodle's fault. But our implementation was poor. And because it had just become a big resource pool and not a particularly great one, and because the learning experience and the usability and the unification was not there with that solution, it meant that we had a real problem on our hands. And the problem was quite simple. Canvas was a great tool to use, but nobody had any faith in the digital learning anymore because of the experience they'd had with Moodle and with all the other bits and pieces. So we had a job to do. We needed some wham. That's winning hearts and minds. Now, myself and my colleagues set about creating a campaign. And I'm going to sort of just, just go through the sort of ideas behind that first before I move on. Our campaign was simple. We needed, we were lucky, I suppose, in one respect, in that the students had had such a bad time that anything we put in front of them was going to look better. But in, in actuality, we needed to be quite wary of that because what we didn't want them to do was to evangelize over something that wasn't going to deliver because then it would be even worse if it didn't. So we decided we were going to start a campaign, an internal marketing com campaign to get the students behind Canvas before they even knew what they were going to get. Now, we started this before we'd even implemented Canvas. We started this at least six months before because it was very important to myself and my team that we hit the ground running, because as Deb Miller has already pointed out, um, and without sounding too crass, Canvas is an investment that a college makes, and like all investments, they want a return on their investment as soon as possible. So we needed to win the hearts and minds of our students quite rapidly. 
And in order to do that, we needed to think of a way of making Canvas super palatable. Canvas is a great tool, but VLEs don't sell themselves to students very well because they're not particularly exciting. It's not Facebook, it's not Twitter, it's not Snapchat, it's not any of those things. It's something that inevitably it's got apps and it's got its own uh, usability, but you're actually on a bit of an uphill struggle because you're trying to sell them a learning tool, which is like trying to sell mud to somebody. Now, unless they really need mud, they're not going to buy mud off you. It's simple as that. So we have to try and find a way of stopping students seeing their experience in this way. Now, we'd already settled on a series of partners to work with. We'd already settled on a strategy. By this point, we'd already created an online, learning, a di online um, technology enhanced learning strategy. And part of that strategy was to replace the VLE with a, a significant and working alternative, which we'd done. We needed to get the message out. I'm going to actually change that gear because it's pretty, it's pretty bleak when you're still staring at someone bleaching their eyes for too long. Um, we had to get a solution in place. And then after we got all that and we got Canvas in place, and I have to say the implementation was fantastic and the implementation team and the customer success team, big, big thank you to them. We got Canvas up and running. Um, we'd already done some tests. What we needed to do was then win the hearts and the minds. And how are we going to do that? Well, firstly, we need to make sure that the process of getting courses onto Canvas was as simple as possible. Mercifully, it is. So we went through a process of doing that. We'd also chosen, in retrospect, perhaps we should have done, perhaps thought about it a bit longer, but we chose to link our Canvas implementation to our Sys integration. So we were trying to get ProSolution to talk to Canvas, which is all fine and doable, no problem. It just, we hit some, some issues that we didn't anticipate along the way. But what we needed to make sure was that we didn't have any technical difficulties and hiccups, or at least none that were too offensive to the students, that we had um, utilized uh, blended learning consortium objects. I don't know if anyone's a member of the blended learning consortium here. Um, Peter is sat up the top there. Um, but the blended learning consortium provide hours, worth, uh, hours and hours and hours worth of, of online learning objects which you can rapidly deploy inside of, inside of your online courses. So we needed to use those and get our message through to the students that your online experience is valid and working. And in fact, that it felt a bit more like this. We started a campaign, a marketing campaign, to get the students and the staff behind Canvas. We created a range of images and visuals which we embedded all over the place. They're on LinkedIn, they're on Twitter, they're on, we have an internal, we have an internal um, uh, social media platform at the college called Yammer. Um, we use that very extensively to embed this message. And what we needed to staff was to uh, get on board and make a firm decision. We knew that Canvas delivered all of the factors, the Morville factors that we needed. It's usable, desirable, valuable, accessible, credible, findable, and all of those things. We knew it was those things. Those are the things that the students valued the most because they wanted to go from this kind of experience to this kind of experience. They wanted to be able to utilize their websites and all of their technologies and do their courses whenever they liked, in whatever manner they liked. And so we created our own marketing. Now, all of this can be seen, or can be seen in and around the Grimsby Institute on all of its digital signage and all over the shop. Um, and what we were doing was simply embedding the message in cool ways um, that Canvas is downloadable, it's free, and the course, your course will be with you and in your pocket. The idea that is that instead of it being spread across diff disparate systems, that Canvas allows us to unify all of the courses into one course. And that course is something, and all the information for that course is something you can carry with you in your pocket and do in your own time or inside of the class or whenever. It was the full concept of mobile learning which it freed us up to achieve. And in that sense, we've hit the ground running. So in the, very in the very truth of the matter was that it was, as we saw it, we had one app to rule them all. Because we're Office 365 and we grant all of our students Office 365 accounts, it meant that we can unify that through Canvas. Because it also works with Google, it enabled us to, we have a few stray Googlers, even though we're Microsoft, you know, we sleep on Microsoft pillows. 
Um, we have a few stray Googlers, but of course Canvas allows that. And Canvas then became a platform that worked. And as I was once told by somebody, you really should always just work. And that meant that we could faithfully start to market Canvas in a way that we chose that would be palatable to learners. And that message that we wanted to convey to them was that it was a world of mobile education and that the course was in your pocket and with you always. In fact, we said the course will be with you or use the course and blatantly nicked many Star Wars quotes, I have to say. We did get a bit of a warning at one point um, because we were using multicolored canvas brands and that is very unpopular. Um, and our customer, ser our customer service manager, our customer success manager did ring and politely, and I have to say, uh, John Time Lord Perry was very polite and just said, that logo that you keep changing the color of, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, we love all, what, all love your work, great, but don't change the logo because it makes all of our marketing very uneasy. So we was like, okay, we won't do that anymore, promise. <laughs> no, we, we love it. And that's led inevitably to where we are now. And what I'd like to do is, assuming this works okay, is show you a video. This has led us now to our full campaign. Now we've launched Canvas and it's out there with the students. And now we have a your course, your way. But the message that we did from that was Canvas is your, for us is your course, your way. You can learn when you choose. You can learn in your own pace. You can learn in your own time. We provide the resources. We provide the platform. You provide the learning. Because going back to that first slide, that's what we were trying to avoid all along. We knew that the Feltag Titanic was going to sink everybody. We knew that the FE finances, and we can circle around and around and around and around and keep hitting that iceberg all we want. Or we can simply get a new boat, put everyone in the new boat, and carry on the journey. And that's exactly what we've done. Thank you very, very much for being very kind. <laughs>